I just use like DK or D. Yeah, I rarely use like K dot. I don't. I don't know what that really means. Well, it's it's it yeah. I, I don't know what that means. Right. So you said that sometimes they divide by the by the actual. Yeah, that's like the percentage change, right? Yeah. Well, first an announcement to make. Uh, if you have your uh, syllabus with you, and this will be announced again. On the 17th, we will have a three hour discussion, at least three hours in the morning. It starts at 9. I think we tried to uh, rent a place a little bit larger. And uh, last time I asked you to give me a topic. This topic uh, would, you have a chance to give a short, uh, short presentation on that topic and hopefully uh, that will be the basis uh, of your uh, long longest paper and the paper both the uh, short paper and the uh, long paper will be due on the 27th and if you look at your calendar um, on the 17th we are focusing on the very last session, which is April 27th, a dialogue among civilizations and a global outlook. So when we come back on the 20th and the, um, on the 20th and uh, 22nd, we will discuss ac according to the syllabus and ecological perspectives. And also, uh, I think the core approved that we can present uh, papers rather than the final exam, but when, with one condition, that you all have to show up uh, during the time of the exam. You show up and sign. They want to make sure that you're still on, on campus, I guess. You sign that, and of course, that's the time for you to also present your paper. Do you know when that is? Because I checked. We don't have schedule. any idea. Okay. <laughs> we don't have any idea yet. But they should. should be <coughs> they, they, it takes a little bit of time for, for them to uh, make adjustments. Uh, this will be uh, announcement will be made again on the uh, 17th, a three hour discussion. On the uh, 20th, 22nd, the, the last class, the uh, no exam, no paper will be due on the 27th, both the show and the long. And I would like to have a title. You may have some titles already, if you don't. And please give me the title on Thursday. And the latest will be next uh, Tuesday, so we can arrange for you to uh, give your presentations according to certain, uh, certain order. And there will be no final exam, but there will be longish paper presented at the same time as the third short paper. But uh, you are obligated to show up at the time of the exam. You don't have to do anything then, but you have to show up. And probably you need to sign a piece of paper. Now uh, we'll make that announcement again. Uh, again, I uh, invite you to make your own observations concerning uh, some of the topics we can pursue. Because starting from uh, last week, when we uh, get into the question of uh, approaches to Confucian ethics. Our purpose is to relate Confucian ethics in general to some of the important, they may turn out to be perennial problems that the human community is confronted with, uh, such as human rights, uh, the feminist critique, and of course, um, dialogue among civilizations, the question of the global ethic, and, uh, and ecological perspective. So you, I'm sure that you have some ideas of your own and uh, how it's a good idea you can relate it to the Confucian tradition either in a critical way or in a synthetic way, but you can offer your own ideas about these critical issues. Since uh, the uh, Declaration of Human Rights, I think uh, all the uh, more than 50 years, half a century, it has been one of the most powerful 
and persuasive attempt to come up with some universal standard for human behavior. Uh, today, you're still confronted with the question of human rights, and some advanced uh, industrial societies insisted that human rights are universal ethics. All societies will have to observe the basic ideas of human rights. So many countries published their white paper and given a general sense of the different degrees of developing you know, human rights uh, uh, discourses. And those societies who fail to meet the minim minimum requirement of human rights are basically criticized. It also becomes a major uh, bone of contention among a number of countries. You're quite aware of that. Last time, we talked about the three kinds of uh, ethics, three types, and care ethics, virtue ethics, and role ethics. And these are very uh, congenial to the Confucian style of moral reason. And yet, curiously, none of these forms of ethics takes uh, human rights as an important feature or a defining characteristic of uh, their approach, approaches to ethics. The Kell ethic, I pointed out, and probably came from the feminist tradition with emphasis on community, care, responsibility, and long-term perspective on human flourishing and civility, questions of justice. And of course, the overall concern is uh, the well-being of the human community as a whole. And it is uh, sometimes characterized as the maternal care. You know, this is uh, rooted in a form of human nature. And virtue ethics is internalization of basic virtues. And that is a continuous process of uh, self-cultivation. And these uh, uh, virtues eventually will become totally internalized, therefore define the particular character of a person. So through internalization of these values, you know, personal characters will be formed. And then the person, in other words, the uh, purpose is to cultivate virtue, virtuous person or cultivated person, and it's a, a process of internalization, uh, very much like the Xunjian idea. But uh, there's very little discussion of uh, human nature. Uh, that's true with care ethics, and certainly to a, to a certain extent with rogue ethics. So these form of, of ethics uh, are currently uh, some of the most uh, persuasive styles of moral reasoning and they're all involved in the idea of the moral engagement in the world today and it is uh, absolutely critical for each and human being to develop a form of uh, ethical intelligence you have all kinds of other intelligences but this one is something non-negotiable it is something uh, general There are other ways, traditionally, these are very new, you know, even though uh, virtue ethics is uh, deeply rooted in uh, Aristotle's uh, philosophy. The thing that on the surface is most congenial to the Confucian style is role ethics. And new books will be published soon on this particular idea. The idea is that uh, the role you assume as a concrete person here and now defines who you are. And the people who subscribe to role ethics are not deeply concerned about identity questions. Uh, we know exactly who we are. There's no way we can search for a certain kind of inner identity without reference to the network of relationships uh, in which we're defined. So we know, for example, I am the son of my father and the father of my children. I am